Holy moly, eggs and sun-dried tomato is this week's recipe on the Belvedere College Health and Wellbeing YouTube channel. I'm fully aware we're all in the tick of exams at the minute, whether you're doing your house exams in your year group or you're preparing for state exams coming up in a week's time. This is a recipe that will leave you feeling full for a long period of time throughout the day. It's full of goodness. The micronutrients you're getting from the avocados, the vegetables, protein from the eggs, carbohydrate then from your good spuds, all right? We're gonna have to do with the spuds something a little bit different. So I find if, you, if you've had a say a, a roast dinner on a Sunday and you have a few spuds left over, ideal. If not, what you're gonna have to do separate to this before you get cracking on the eggs is we're going to uh, parboil the spuds for about half an hour, okay? And then we're gonna shove them into the oven at 180 degrees. Little drizzle of olive oil, salt and pepper and we'll leave them in there for another half hour, okay? Then we'll take them out and let them cool nicely. So I cooked this dish on a Monday morning, I think it was, after I had had Sunday dinner with spuds in it. So it was very handy. I just chopped up some of the leftover spuds and threw them into the dish. Now this will all make sense as we lead into the video now, but as I said, a very satiating meal. So it's gonna leave you feeling full for long. You're getting a good, slow, sustained release of carbohydrate from your, from your spuds. And then the avocado, you know, those healthy fats keeping that brain. And I know what you're thinking. How can you sun-dried tomatoes in this place? Well, they're not literally sun-dried, but trust me, they taste damn good. First up, for the not literally sun-dried, but taste damn good sun-dried tomatoes, we're gonna have the oven preheating to 180. Then we're gonna slice the tomatoes in half with the slice side facing up into an oven-proof tray. We don't wanna be cracking any plates or blowing up any metal or anything like that, okay? Not even sure if that's possible, but anyway, Make sure that it's an oven-proof tray. All right, olive oil, balsamic vinegar, salt and pepper. Drizzle it all over the top and then give it a shake about to make sure everything gets a lovely coating in all of those ingredients. Olive oil, salt, pepper, balsamic vinegar. And these are going to be a beautiful. All right, shake it all about, as you can see there. The oven has been preheating at 180 and they're going to go in for about 25 minutes to half an hour or till they get a level that you like them to. All right, next up is the ingredients for the holy moly egg creation. And holy moly, does it taste good. So the spuds, again, previously cooked up, we're gonna slice them up. I've got garlic, red onion, and a pepper. They're all going onto a pan, okay? And I'm gonna fry them with about a tablespoon of olive oil until each side of the spuds become nice and brown and crispy. So they've been going for about five minutes on that side, I would say over about medium heat on the pan and then I'm just going to flip them nicely. I did attempt this with my fingers and I was politely told by the heat of the potato to get some cutlery. So if you're doing this, make sure you be safe. Do it with a knife and fork or a tongs or something that you have to flip them and don't be an idiot like me and use your fingers. So you're gonna flip them to the other side and fry over that medium heat for another five minutes or so until they're golden brown. And trying not to get any onions out there on the on, on the cooker like me you must all be wondering how much stuff i spilled on the on the counter at this stage but anyway look at it all tastes the same at the end of the day contents of the pan going in to another oven proof tray okay that's all going in i'm putting my eggs in first though i think we've done five eggs for this whole eggs all right all going in with the contents of the pan and make sure we spread it all out Okay, so we spread it all out. So we're gonna get an even, a mouthful or a forkful of spuds, peppers, onions, when eggs when we when, when we go to eat it. All right, the avocado was going. You see, bing, yeah, like the microwave microwave sounding out there. I was delighted it went in. Avocado, um, for the guacamole next, a nice ripe one. Okay, and it's up to you kind of what you put into this. But this is my own recipe. So if you want to, uh, I don't know, try it. By all means, go ahead. So a full avocado goes in. Then I slice up a lime and squeeze every last ounce of juice I can get out of the thing. All right, really tangy, zingy, 
Yeah, zingy is probably the word as opposed to tangy, I suppose, but very refreshing. Chili flakes, not for the faint heart, as much or as little as you like, or maybe not at all if you just can't handle the spice. A little bit of salt is going in as well, and some people do it, but not me personally, is a little teaspoon of olive oil, and then you mix that all up. But personally, I feel you're getting enough uh, fats and vegetable oil from the avocado itself that I don't really need that. I kind of, it gets into it more liquidy um, mixer, I suppose is the word, from the lime juice. So that's fine for me. But if you want to put in a bit of olive oil, by all means, try it, play around with it. Um, it's your guacamole at the end of the day. It's going into your mouth, not mine, unless you want to cook me a breakfast at one stage in your life. But that would probably be a little bit weird now. Next up, our sun-dried tomatoes should be ready. Now, that is how I like them. Isn't that just a lovely photo, to be honest with you? All right. So we're going to take them out of the oven 25 minutes to about half an hour but you'll know um you'll know when you see them okay the holy moly eggs they've been in for about i would say 15 to 20 minutes when it's all gone hard just poke with a fork because it will go hard on the outside before it does on the inside and we just want to make sure them eggs are fully cooked and personally Again, you don't have to, it doesn't have to be feta cheese, it can be any cheese sprinkled over the top and that is just a brilliant way to start a summer's day. Look at that. 